I'm a hell of a geek with intelligence speak. Small time, but my skills will embellish my reach. The upscale life and the elegant eat. Just a grilled cheese and french fries and tell me. Sometimes she saved the straight while he was still jobless. She gave the snake while he was still godless. She made the snake, but still remained modest while he straight escape while we was on Sometimes, Now I fear nothing. She said they never come. What's up, y'all? This is Longhorn Hip Hop. We're here at Fun 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 Fest on day three. That is Sunday with none other than Soul Khan. Soul Khan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How y'all doing? You know, we're doing all right. It's a little humid today, a little less windy, so it's a little bit of a trade-off. Um, first thing we wanted to know from you is uh, if you could tell the kids out there a little bit about where you're from. Hi. Uh, I'm uh, originally from Woodland Hills, California in the San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles. And uh, after college, I sojourned to Brooklyn, New York, and I've remained there ever since. So uh, it's, it's where I'm based out of, it's where my crew is largely based out of, the Brown Bag All-Stars. We all met at Fat Beats New York, and uh, the store, RIP Fat Beats. And uh, we just you know, make music together since, and uh, uh, both together in uh, solo ventures, so. Yeah, we, we heard the story about Fat Beats. Do you wanna, do you wanna fill us in a little bit about the history? I mean, as far as it pertains to the to the closure of the store, I think it just really was just a market or economic consideration. But you know, as far as it pertains to my crew, you know, we all started working there at different times, and we all coalesced at around 2007. The group really took, and the crew really took shape. 2008, and you know, it's four rappers, two DJs now. Uh, Two of the rappers and one of the DJs also make beats, and you know, it's been been trying to establish ourselves in a very competitive uh, domain of hip hop without any gimmicks or uh, shortcuts. It's a very trying thing. It's a very tough experience, but we do it. So. Yeah, yeah. And the way we first became aware of Soul Con, uh was through your battle rapping. So I wanted to know: did, Were you first a battle rapper or a songwriter? I really only seriously battled starting in 2008. Now I think it's tough for some people to grasp that. Uh, that's fine, it's all good. Yeah, I took to it fairly well, I think, but it was a challenge, especially since it's no longer freestyle, so I would really had to devote myself to it as if I was writing songs. You know, I've done, in the span of two years, I think I did, damn, like, how many battles? Like, over, well over 20-something battles, and if you put that all together in this amount of time, it's really like a few albums, honestly, yeah. in terms of the writing, you know, especially some of these, some of these battles that are, have, uh, you know, three, three minute rounds, nine minutes of, of rapping is nothing to sneeze at, just straight rhyming. That's like, that's like a short album in itself. Uh, and there, there are two things I had to get from battle rap. One was name recognition and two, uh, sort of an internet presence, because I don't really have that much of that at first. And, and that, but after that, after the threshold that I reached, it seemed that if I wanted to further my music ambitions, I would have to stop battle rapping because there's a ever-present stigma in, in the United States, at least, uh, that battle rappers can't make music. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's not. And most people can't make music. It's not. It's not battle rappers' fault. So I, I just had to get out of that. I still support the scene in whatever way that I can, uh, but I henceforth am not active, and I don't see myself being active anytime soon. So yeah. you know, potentially ever, but and I know that saddens some people, but. Yeah. That's the way it goes, you know, I, the music's always been more important to me, and I've sort of entered battling as a fluke in the first place, so it's, I, it meant a lot to me, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm grateful for what it did, but, you know, can't be a battle rapper forever, it's, it's not, I'd rather be regarded as an okay known musician than the world's greatest battle rapper. I think I'm better than just an okay musician, but I think, you know, I still think that uh, it would have hindered me otherwise to stay in that field, so. Uh, and then, so your first like full project was Soul Like Con, yeah. and uh, that was one of my favorite things. One of my favorite songs on the on the album was Fela Soul. Is that is that a tribute to Fela Kuti? Yeah, I mean it's it's I, it, sonically it is. You know, we we yeah. sampled a Fela joint for that. It's pretty obvious if you know his work. Um, and I can say it because it's free. I'm not making any money, so I'm not gonna get sued. Hopefully, uh, it's uh, you know it's, it was a dope song, and I, I it's. I, I, I was produced by J57 of Brown Bag, uh, one of his many uh, wonderful beats that prove how capable a producer he is. But you know, I just I just wanted to speak my mind on things in general and myself. You know, I, I try to mix in boastfulness with some sort of insight on the world and its events to the best of my ability, uh, without being preachy. 
yeah. that's tough to do. It's tough to say. It's tough to say this is good, this is bad in music, when um, you know, in terms of the world and its affairs, without coming off as preachy. And uh, you know, the two schools of thought on that. Some people are like, oh, you know, you got to just speak your experience, or you know, take a soft touch when it comes to that type of subject matter or you'll come off as right, self-righteous. But at the same time, like we live in a very hands-off world that's really become so lax in its, its capacity both to, to, to be in, invested in other people's lives, um, not just in human interaction, but in art. And you know, hip hop is a medium that is ideal for that type of message. It doesn't mean the message has to trump the music, it's still be musical. The flow is there, the delivery is there, the tonality, and you know, a man Aki has a great uh, voice that he utilizes on that song. But I think it's, it is important to be able to have a space where you can actually say something about stuff. Yeah. Not just, you know, as people say, it's art for art's sake. That's very masturbatory and stupid in this age. That's embarrassing. I think, I think, I think, I think if, you have the, if you have renown and fame and you don't do something that either in the body of the music itself and like the construction of the music itself does something important, at least say something with it if it's a discursive type of art that does that does communicate messages. And a lot of people are like, well, some people the way they handle message-based music is they make it so artful in their mind, the message is gone and it's only useful to those who are like really already embedded and has no transformative value, has no transcendent value to reach other people and change their minds yeah. or just give them a relatable experience. Like, I basically approach music like this. There's someone right now at any given time who may literally want to, out of out of alienation or sadness or some other desperate emotion, want to end their life. If I can give that person a sort of a a, 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 a moment of hesitation and some sort of like new hope, not even necessarily with what I'm saying, but just like, hey, this is music. This is music that resonates with me and may changes my mood. To me, that, that, that's an accomplishment that I want. That, that's something that means something to me. If it's one person like that or someone who's someone having a bad day, want to turn around, you know, like that, that we, we're, we're, we're all so alienated and, and messed up that like music is an amazing tool to get people out of that. You know, and it's, it's, it's to not, I, it sounds a little dire, but I'm not here, I'm not here to look cool. I'm not here, I, you know, and that's, you can just buy that. You can buy cool, honestly. So it's, I'm not here to do that. I'm, I'm really here to, Make impact on people. That's it. If I don't do that, then I'm useless. If I'm not doing that, I'm 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 art house hip hop, which is such a corny thing to even try to be. It's like we're not like there are dudes who basically want to be like hip hop dadaists or something like that, and like just do the art for the art. And it's like, yo, man, this is music that saved people's lives. This is music that's transformed people's communities. Like, why why do it less justice than that? I mean, there are people who do, like, art hip-hop, or artful hip-hop that's, like, very, like, very experimental and very cool. Some of it's just really vain, and, like, it's a circle jerk, and, it, and it, it, even from a, a sonic perspective, it sucks. And I'm not going to do that. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm also not going to make stuff that's just, like, self-aggrandizing, you know, because I owe everything that I am right now. If, if, even if it just stopped here, even if I never got above this level. Everything I've attained so far is due to the good graces and patience and, and, and risks that people have taken on listening to me. That's, that's like, you know, I owe it to other people. Yeah. Some people make music for themselves, that's cool. I think it's, it's keep you to put it, put it on your blog. If you're gonna make music for other people, make music for other people. Yeah. Reach them. I noticed uh, that you touched on a little bit. Is you're very like socially and politically like aware, and where where do you get that from? I get it from my mama. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my my whole family. You know, like my grandfather in Poland was before the Holocaust. He was uh, he was a uh, a labor organizer. Um, you know, I grew up being involved in 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 in, in protest activities and in, in, in organizing and in, in electoral political organizing and activism. I don't get to do it as much as I as I used to as I want to, but I feel like you can still you don't have to to make to make politically or socially aware music or, or relevant music. It doesn't have to be a pamphlet. 
It doesn't have to be that. You can do it. And some people do that and they do it well. Some people are very direct, like, this is right and this is wrong and vote for this. And, and they can do it. They can pull it off. And they do it powerfully. I can't really, I, I feel like maybe that's not within my skill set to really carry that or it doesn't fit the way I, I, I approach the music. But at the same time, if like, I don't know, like, I mean, I'm not doing it just to stand out and do it as because that's, that's what I do. You know, and, and there's so many rappers who are just like, it's just so f stupid and self-indulgent. I don't mean just bragging. Bragging rap is whatever. As long as you do it well, you can rap about guns and sex and drugs, whatever. If you do it well, you do it artfully, that's cool. If you do it well, like, that's great. One of my favorite rap groups is M.O.P. I'm not going to say that they're like the most socially relevant, <laughs> relevant acts of all time, but they're awesome. They yeah. do well, and they're also crowd. They're crowd oriented. They're there to get you riled up, and they're there to like really interact with the listener, and, and that's that that's moving and striking music. If you're there to like be a little baby voice child and 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 like be there to show off your shoes, like you're not contributing to anything. You're like an ephemeral, useless piece of garbage. Just get sit down. You suck. And I think people should be able to sit, stand up, and say and shout down something. Say that sucks. Yeah. Like that's that's corny. Yeah. That other person did that before. That person doesn't deserve the resource. Resources are so finite now, especially in music. They're not just like raining money all over the place like they used to. So like, if you get that chance, use it. Someone puts a, a, a pile of money in my lap and they're like, we need you to make some incredible earth shattering music. I'm like, all right, I was gonna try to do that anyway, but yeah, I'm gonna still, <laughs> you're gonna get it even, even quicker and with more behind it. Like, I think that's the distinction. Yeah. I think, and like, you know, and, and, and like when I was working at Fat Beats, you know, like there are a lot of people I come across, I was like, who are like up and coming artists and they're now like very successful. I'm like, you're just here because like you want to hang out or you're just here because you don't know how to do anything else. Yeah. You know, if I stop rapping today, I could do a bunch of other stuff. There are a lot of people who, you know, rap because they're just like, because as I've said before, it matches the wardrobe and that's, forget all that. Yeah. You know, not to come off like early 90s backpacker, anti, you know, mainstream, super hip hop lyrical guy. Yeah. Not that either, but like, I'm cool with having fun. But have fun, if you're gonna have fun through music, I make it sound good at least. You know, my man, homeboy Sandman once said, it was actually a cool quote from him. He said, a lot of people say you can't make music of substance or good sounding music or what we think is good, like what a lot of the hip hop community thinks is good and make it like something danceable. Why is it the case that 10, 15 years ago, we were dancing to stuff that was sounded a lot, but it, yeah. just was, it was like, it was, it was richer in sound. It was more innovative. Well, you know, like I literally like, like if everything just sounds to me right now, a lot of the time, not everyone, but a lot of things just like sound like one long 808 pattern and it's like that's cool you do be be dope with it though be like off the wall do go, go somewhere really next with it but if you're not going to do that just don't do it yeah. i'm offering the chance to a lot of rappers just to quit just stop it because you don't even they don't last long the biggest rappers right now are actually lyricists yes. every single one of them yeah. not anything else they're not they're not going to lie they may like have buzz but they die yeah. you know i've seen rappers come and go it doesn't matter. Right now, Eminem, Royce, you know, uh, Jay still obviously one of, the, one of the biggest rappers alive and will remain so. Nas, those cats are still around and they stick around. They don't flop the next time they drop an album. They still, they maintain a steady course because they have something to offer people. Yeah. If you're, you know, like, and, and granted, this is like akin to a lot of rants that a lot of people have given over the years. The difference is, I don't just rap about it in my raps. That's not all you're gonna hear. I just figured, so well, I got the chance to talk to y'all. Like, why not say that? So. Um, and one thing I remember from last year was uh, when there was that whole like crazy flotilla incident. You were you were very um, willing to speak out about that. Is that tough for you? Like, as as a member of the Jewish community, is that is that a tough thing to speak out against? Well, like social justice and and responsibility for not just yourself, but others outside your circle are, are, are things that I was raised as, as, as with as being a Jewish value so that's not a problem to me you know I don't I don't I, it's it's I'm not against the state in Israel existing that you can't displacement won't solve displacement that doesn't yeah. help yeah. and that'll just leave more resentment and rage um, but at the same time you know military might something that has to be uh, wielded with 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 uh, it's a weird word to apply to it, but grace. 
if, if such if such force could ever be used gracefully. But you know, it, it's a lot of people make a lot of excuses when talking about things like that, like, oh, it's a disorienting situation, it's tough. Like, I used to, my day job, I was a civilian investigator for police misconduct in the city of New York. I was a regular dude who was charged with the task with a bunch of other folks investigating police misconduct in a city that has the largest pro-police advocacy of any metropolitan area I've ever lived in. And I hear the rationale of people with power. It was, in the, in the moment, it's tough. And the more I heard it, I was like, but that's the power you, you take on, it's the responsibility you take on. And you don't have the right to just be like, after the fact, like, oh, it, it, it all happened so fast. We couldn't tell. Forget that. Forget all that. It's, you know, like, when you are more powerful than the person you're dealing with, you have to exhibit temperance and restraint. That's, that's it. And that's why, and, and, and you know, I don't, I don't go into my music being like, this, 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 because, but you know, like, you, you have these chances to talk to people now in this, in this way that you didn't before when I was coming up, like when I was younger, and, and it's like, why not talk to people about it? Yeah. I got, I get into argument, like, I get into arguments with fans on Twitter. I didn't know there were hip-hop Republicans. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that existed. Yeah. I'm yeah. astounded by it. It's, yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was possible or even allowed. Yeah. By like the by like hip hop ethics, yeah. is hip hop hip hop is is really a is a it's a populist thing, yeah. in its heart, in my mind at least. Yeah. It should be a progressive thing in my yeah, mind. I think so too, you know. But then again, some might say, well, well it's tough because it's there are few there are fewer mediums in music where the where because it is just pretty much the rapper and the audience. There are few that really there are few other music genres that exhibit that 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 unity between the message and the music. So. And it has a history, you, know, you can't be, you can't step outside of history and say it's not, you know, a tradition of black musicianship that rose out of, you know, uh, socially and economically disadvantaged circumstances. So, to be just to that and to be right to that, you can't just go back and be like, I love hip hop, but man, I really am cool with billionaires having tax breaks. It's not, <laughs> they contradict each other to yeah, me, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and hell, granted, if you think about it, yeah, like hip hop definitely does reinforce values of materialism in some capacity. Society enforces those values. It's not, and you know, and 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 hip hop probably wouldn't be where it is without corporate interests propping it up and sponsoring it. And those interests also take money that maybe they didn't earn. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? You know, it's 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 it. It's complicated, but I, I do speak my mind when I feel like it's something I can speak on. It's because there's certain things, certain basic values of decency that I was raised with that I'm not going to ever abandon. Yeah. Were you keeping up with the whole the UN situation with the Palestine vote? Yeah, that, that angered me. Uh, I, I really think this should have been a kind of a, a yes issue a long time ago. Uh, I mean, you can't have, you can't have a, a, a stable peaceful future for that region without a Palestinian state. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You can't, you have to have some reconciliation and if that is the threshold of reconciliation that'll be it. Yeah. That's something I, lear I learned in my study of intrastate conflict. You, whatever the benchmark, it may not always be where you think it is, the benchmark for, for where peace emerges, but you really have to aim for the one that's like, the one that makes sense. Like, the, the, what are they going to do? Get it beyond, you can't be on your guard forever. You can't keep the guns forever. You can't keep the, the, the paranoia, the resentment, the hostility forever. It's not a way to live. It's not a way that people can coexist. And frankly, even it's not in, the, it's not in Jewish people's interest either. It's not in Israel's interest to be threatened by everyone. And if, they're, if the argument is, hey, we're gonna, if we let, give them an inch, they're going to take a mile and the whole country that we have built, it, you can't it's going to happen either way. It'll happen the other way if you keep the, if you keep on that track. If you're co constantly combative and hostile and, and don't give people a chance to have more uh, that they want, then you're never going to you're never going to have peace, ever. Someone, if you're like, don't, but they want to wipe Israel off the face of the map, someone will do it then without you giving anyone any concessions. Yeah. Now, that's the nature of power. It requires concessions. So. Uh, last question. Favorite Texas rappers? Favorite Texas rappers, uh, Bun, obviously. Um, uh, who else? Uh, I'm trying to think of, of like ones that like really fit. He's definitely probably Bun. He's my favorite. Uh, Bun B, UGK or, or Bun B? Well, RIP, you know, Penn C. I just, but you know, in terms of like the more lyrical end of it was generally, you know, Bun B. Or at least now, especially now, Bun B. I think is really 
uh, reestablish something uh, of himself. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, um, who else? I'm trying to think. Not that I met anyone. I just want to pick carefully so I don't anger anyone, uh, either out of inclusion or omission. Um, I'm trying to think of like who's. Uh, like a Texas rapper that's really like gets me. Uh, you know, uh, um, honestly, oh, uh, there was a group a while back that I still really dug. Uh, Chaotics. Uh, there were a group. I think they were out. I don't remember if they were Fort Worth or Dallas or Houston. They're one of the three. Uh, but I, I used to spin that stuff all the time when I was still uh, DJing and when I was. You know, just listening to stuff all over the place. Um, Texas got a dope scene, you know, and and Austin's a great place because not only does it promote local talent, regional talent, but it also gives folks like me a chance um, and much people of much larger stature as a present to come here and shine for a very receptive crowd. Favorite UGK or Bun B song? Uh, well, my mind's playing. Uh, Trick to me is it, Tricks on me is my favorite uh, Ghetto Boys drum. Favorite UJK song? I don't know if I can say it on. You can say the it. Air. Yeah. yeah. Pregnant pussy, I can say that. <laughs> yeah, I can say, can that? say that. All right, cool. I just, I don't care. It's, ra it's raunchy as hell. I know. It's yeah. like I like that stuff sometimes. Yeah. You know, that's old. Wow, I feel old that's now. That's old school. Yeah. yeah. Whew. <laughs> I'm not that old, but I know old stuff. I yeah. swear. You know, I'm like 26, but like, it's a damn good song. Yeah. Well, cool. We appreciate your time so much, man. Thank you very much. And would you be cool? What up? It's your man Soulcon Brown Bag All Stars. Right now, we are at Fun 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 Fest. I lost track of how many funds I said. Uh, you chilling with Longhorn Hip Hop, uh, all my people in Texas, vibe to this. Peace. I'll be around. Soulpod.com. It's like gang is a shocker car with soul in front of it. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Y'all great.